Welcome to chapter two, key issue two, why is population increasing? We've got a whole bunch of people on this planet, and it seems like we're getting more and more. Well, let's look at the components of population growth, ways we define and organize information about why it might be growing. First, we've got the crude birth rate, or the CBR, which is the total number of live births in a year for every 1,000 people. So basically, how many, how many babies are we having? If we're in a country that's having a lot of babies, then our population is probably going to grow. But we also look at the crude death rate, the CDR, which is the total number of deaths in a year for every 1,000 people. Well, if we're having a lot of babies, our birth rate is up, but our death rate is also up, then our population isn't going to grow very much. But if we're having a high CBR, low CDR, like we're not having people die, then our population is going to grow because we're having a bunch of kids and people are not dying. The natural increase rate, or the NIR, is the percentage by which the population grows in a year. And how we calculate that is by subtracting the death rate from the birth rate. So for example, if our CBR is 20 and our CDR is 5, we've got an NIR of 15. The percentage breakdown would be 1.5%. We look over here at our population over history, um, and of course, 8,000 BC, we've got a very low population, and it stays that way for a long time. And it, it's only until around the 1800s where we see the effects of the Industrial Revolution that the population starts to explode exponentially. And as we look, as the time of this book was published and written in 2012, our population's up to over 7 billion people. And as geographers, we ask, why is that? Well, we can talk about that the birth rate's up, the death rate is down. Um, but we also, <clears throat> we also dig in further and ask, well, why is the birth rate up? Why are less people dying? Natural increase. During the 21st century, the world's NIR has been 1.2, which basically means we're growing. About 82 million people are added each year. More than 95% of the natural increase rate is from developing countries, meaning there isn't necessarily a lot of growth here in the United States or in Europe. The growth is all happening in countries that are still developing. Why is that? Because they are developing, meaning they're getting technologies and medicines and they're able to extend their lives so people are living longer. At the same time, they're still developing countries so people are having lots and lots of kids. In sub-Saharan Africa, which is where we are right now, the increase rate exceeds 2.0, meaning people are doubling the amount of kids that they're having. I mean, it's growing exponentially. In Europe, the NIR is negative, meaning people are not really having kids and the population is actually kind of uh, dying off. It's getting smaller. The NIR of the USA is 0.6, meaning it's pretty low. But our population continues to grow. So what's up with that? Well, immigration is what brings in people to the United States in a steady stream. We've seen the major growth in Africa and in Asia. In Europe and North America, you can see that the NIR is a lot lower. But again, population increases in the United States because of immigration. Doubling time is one of the things that we look at. Doubling time is the number of years needed to double a population. So if you've got a bunch of people having babies and living a long time, the doubling time is not going to be very long because the population is going to double very quickly. But if you're up here in Scandinavia and people are not really having babies because the population is developed and people are at work and they're in school, then it's going to take a long time to reach your doubling time. And as you can see in this graph here, world population is going up at a steady rate. Um, the annual increase is uh, going to continually go up, but not as fast as the population, while our natural increase rate has gone down a little bit. Why is that? Okay, well, at the beginning, when people all over the earth were exploding in population, you can see that bump there. Um, but as we get closer to um, developed countries here in 2015, our natural increase rate percentage goes down actually because the developed countries aren't increasing in that manner. So we look at the crude birth rate. As geographers we try to understand 
why people are having lots of babies. What's going on? Why aren't babies being born in the United States? Why are tons of babies being born in sub-Saharan Africa? And by the way, we say sub-Saharan because the Sahara Desert's right here, and everything below that is sub. So in the United States, we have things like um, healthcare, where we have birth control methods. Um, women are in school more. Women are working in jobs, so they're not staying home and having lots of babies. There's not a reason for them to. Uh, because farmers are, are typically in the United States run by, by corporations or individuals. Families aren't really staying at home to grow crops. As opposed to sub-Saharan Africa, where it is still a developing continent of countries, and they are having lots of kids because not everybody in the family lives as long and they need the help to raise crops. At the same time, they don't have birth control really, so they're having lots of kids. The birth rate is very high. Fertility, the ability to have kids. The total fertility rate is the average number of children a woman will have during her, child during her childbearing years, which is typically from age 15 to 49, but that does fluctuate. Again, we look at the fertility rate in the United States. Uh, what's the fertility rate of a female in childbearing years in the United States? Okay, well, it's going to be maybe two. Maybe we're going to have two kids. Sub-Saharan Africa, it's way higher. They're going to have four or even more. They're having lots of kids, again, for the reasons of they don't have birth control. They're not educated about such things. They're not going to school instead of staying home. Um, they, and they need to have kids to help them grow their farms. So that's why these things are occurring. Mortality. Combined with our death rate for all developing countries is lower than the combined rate for all developed countries. Meaning, it's interesting that the mortality rate, the death rate for the developing countries is lower than the combined rate for all developed countries. Because you think about, well, developed countries, they're probably going to have a lower death rate. And that's true to a certain extent. But what happens is people start to live longer in the developing countries. And so they're not dying at a, at a fast rate as compared to the developed countries who have an aging older population and higher population. For example, Denmark, it's wealthy and developed. It has a higher death rate than Cape Verde, which is very poor. That's because Cape Verde is developing and people are living longer. And in Denmark, you've got an aging older population where people are dying and it's a larger population. Same thing, USA has a higher death rate than Mexico. Why is this? Well, more than what I've said, we're going to dig into the demographic transition model. And this is going to be discussed later in the chapter, like next key issue. Population pyramids. These are really cool. You look at them right now, maybe if you haven't seen them and you're like, what is this? This makes no sense. But I actually like these. They're kind of fun to look at. Population pyramids show the percentage of total population in five-year age groups, for the most part. We start with the youngest people at the bottom and the older generations at the top. Males on the left, females on the right. And you can see the ages here, age zero to four, all the way up to age 85 and beyond, male and female. So we're gonna start by looking at the United States. You can see our population is pretty even here. We've got people that are babies, teens, 20s, 30s, and as we get older, it starts to small, it starts to get smaller in population because as we get up towards the 80s, people don't live as long. Switch over to Lawrence, Kansas, which is still in the United States, but this is a very specific city and situation, and this is really interesting. You look at it here. Okay, this part's kind of similar to the United States, but why in the world do we have these two arms off here? What is going on? Well, think about that. Well, what's the age group? Okay, it's like late teens, early 20s. Okay, well, there's late teens and early 20s on both sides of the pyramid. Where is the situation where you're going to find late teens and early 20s? What is going on in Lawrence, Kansas? What are people doing there? Well, there is a college in Lawrence, Kansas called the University of Kansas. And that's where people are going to school, this age group. See, Lawrence, Kansas is a small town, but they have this big university where there's a huge population of male and female students in their late teens, early 20s. And that's why we see this age population sticking out here. Naples, Florida, an upside-down pyramid. We've got 
not very many young people and a whole bunch of old people. Why are we going to have a whole bunch of old people in Florida? Well, you may have heard that Florida, specifically Naples, is home to a retirement community where people from across the country move to because the weather's nice, the population, um, excuse me, the, the beaches, the geographic setting is beautiful, um, and they have a community of people that are like them. So lots of people retire in their older years to Florida, specifically Naples. And then Laredo, Texas. What's going on here? It's kind of like the overall population pyramid of the United States, but really the bottom's a lot wider. What is going on in these um, earlier ages? Well, Texas, okay, that's southern, kind of middle portion of the United States. What could be going on where this population is growing like that? Well, Laredo specifically is on the border. Who's coming across the border to add to the population? We've got Latin American immigrants, young families who are coming over to find jobs, both male and female. So you can see why it's a wider population pyramid on the bottom there. The dependency ratio. This is the number of people too young or too old to work compared to those of working age. You look at Naples, Florida, and we've got a problem because this young people who can work, they're not going to be able to support this older population. There's too many of them. Same thing over here. If we've got a bunch of babies here in Laredo, Texas, our older generation is not going to be able to keep working and support them. These are things we look at as geographers. And the other thing we look at is sex ratio, or people's gender, where it's the number of males per 100 females. Developed countries have more females because they live longer, meaning typically women live longer than females. So in developed countries where people live longer, there's going to be more females. And as we look here, at the dependency ratio of the earth, we can see that there's a whole bunch of people that are under the age of 15. Of course, we've already talked about it. Sub-Saharan Africa, there's a whole bunch of kids being born over here. And our gender, the sex ratio, where we've got equal is in these tan areas here. When there's a lot more men than women, we see a lot of Middle Eastern and Asian countries here. I wonder why that is. We're going to get into that and more women than men. And as we just discussed, in developed countries, you're starting to see more women than men because typically they live longer. That's our look at Key Issue 2.